I have reviewed a lot of Synology hardware, created many tutorials on their software, and I have a lot of experience consulting and deploying Synology systems for our clients. In this video, I want to explore some of the best apps available on the Synology platform. Whether you're a home user, a business user, or just a tech enthusiast, these apps will help you get the most out of your Synology device. So let's get started. Are you an individual or forward-thinking business seeking expert assistance with network engineering, storage, or virtualization projects? Maybe you're part of an internal IT team that needs to proactively manage, monitor, and secure your technology. We offer comprehensive consulting services tailored to meet your specific requirements. Whether you need fully managed or co-managed IT services, our team is ready to help you. We specialize in supporting businesses that require IT administration or teams seeking an extra layer of support to enhance their operations. Our install team is ready to assist you with all of your structure cabling and Wi-Fi planning needs as well. To learn more about any of our services, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out the Hire Us form, and let us start crafting the perfect IT solution for you. If you want to show some extra love for our channel, check out our swag store with shirts, hats, dust accessories, and more. We also have affiliate links down below that will get you discounts and deals on products and services we talk about on this channel. With the ad read out of the way, let's get you back to the content that you came here for. Now, it's not a coincidence that the shirt I chose to wear tells you RAID is not a backup because it's so important to back that ass up. The reality is your data is important to you. So I wanted to start out with hyper backup being my favorite way and the best way to back up a Synology NAS. It has a lot of connectivity to a lot of different services that does include, and I have tutorials not on just setting up hyper backup, but also how to set it up on other storage targets, such as emulating S3. So you can have your own offsite backups. It'll of course easily back up to another Synology as well. And it's not just data backup that's supported here. You have the ability to back up the applications themselves and all of their settings. So you can choose what you want to have backed up, choose the applications if we wanted to send the extra data with it, including those file settings or even the settings for hyper backup itself. Multiple jobs are supported, scheduling, and a rotation cycle that is relatively easy to figure out here. Check out my tutorial in hyper backup where I go way more in depth on this, but definitely starting with backups is important. Now, while hyper backup is for backups, Synology does have a snapshot system. It's relatively easy to use. You install the snapshot replication tool, and then you can go here to any particular folder. We're gonna to go to this one and we want to take a snapshot. This will allow us to have a snapshot of exactly how this particular folder is at this moment in time. We can lock this snapshot. We can enable immutable snapshots so it has a protection period of so many days. This is a really nice feature and you can completely automate it by going to settings and enabling daily snapshots as needed, weekend only snapshots. It's got a lot of options to customize exactly how many snapshots you want, how long you want for retention, and this makes a very quick recovery point. These snapshots do have the ability to be replicated to another Synology that is also running ButterFS. I have a full tutorial you'll find linked down below of how to set up the snapshots. Now, keeping on the theme of utilities and kind of functional things of Synology, I really recommend you load the storage analyzer. I really like this because it gives me snapshots of exactly where my data is stored and in what types of data I have on the Synology so I understand what I'm filling up or what my quota usages are or what my file types are of what is really taking up space on my Synology. Not only does it do that, it can set up reports that run on a regular basis, so you can set them to go backwards in time. I only keep a few days with them, and this allows me to see at that point in time how much data was used. So you can set trends and kind of get an idea what's going on with your Synology and where all your data is and what's taking up all the space. Now, the last utility I want to mention is Log Center. Once again, loading Log Center gives you a lot of insight into little things like maybe you want to collect logs from your firewall. You want to collect logs from, well, any number of devices or even the Synology itself and cross-reference that information, have a little pie chart over here, be able to kind of get an insight into what's going on with Synology. Now, what's really nice is they have the ability to also send these logs to another server. You can set up different ports to have different systems. Sending the logs helps you organize them. And that's why there's a whole named list in here. It's not the most advanced log server, but it really gets the job done for, well, basic logging. If you just need some ingest for different devices you have and they're sending out things in syslog, it is able to have those syslogs set up as inputs. It supports BSD, IETF format, and some customization here. It supports both UDP and TCP. So if you're using a TCP with an SSL, it actually has that feature as well. 
Now, the next one I want to mention is Container Manager, which is just another word for Docker. I think this is really awesome the way they've decided to integrate Docker into Synology because this would be where all of my Docker ran if I didn't have a bunch of other things and I have a big lab. The Synology being able to do this adds a great deal of functionality. So even if the app that you want may not be in the Synology app list, so many things are available on the Docker Hub and able to be containerized that this kind of fills in that gap. Matter of fact, I want to give a shout out to Marius Hosting. Absolutely amazing guides on all these different Docker containers and how to set them up in a Synology. Because it's not just a matter of setting them up in exactly the same way you may be used to for Docker, but don't worry, there's a guide for an amazing number of them here. Matter of fact, this is just a fun way to discover a lot of interesting and very useful Docker containers that you might like in general. Now, while Plex Server is available for Synology, I really prefer MB. I always had, well, some bugginess with Plex and I'm someone who bought the Plex Pass lifetime and I'm still not happy with it. MB works flawless. It works on all my devices. The playback has been incredibly smooth and it's natively built into Synology as one of their third-party apps that you can load right from their package center. Now, I want to mention, I don't just use MB for watching movies or TV shows, but also for music. It actually works really, really well, I think, as a music player, loading up all the different music I have and moving those archives around and getting them in here was really easy. They make file manipulation in general really easy in Synology. So MB is just one more extension of that. Uh, it's built in. In, so I find it really to be a solid app. I know there's others out there, but this one just works. Despite its name of Active Backup for Business, this is something I believe a lot of home users use because it is a really nice agent backup for backing up your Windows machines. It does have the ability to back up your Mac as well. It also does have the ability to tie into certain hypervisors and be able to back them up natively by talking to the hypervisor, which is going to be the option for both VMware and Hyper-V. Now, natively, it's not going to support some of the other hypervisors that I've talked about on this channel, such as Proxmox or XCPNG, but if you're running a Windows system, System within there, yeah, you can just load the agent and it works quite well. It actually has the ability to back up a NAS as well. So another Synology NAS can be attached to this for backups. This is a really handy utility to keep all of your backups in an organized manner. Yes, you do notice that my Tom's gaming system hasn't been backed up since 12-8-2023. Uh, that's because it's the last time I turned it on. I don't really use it that much. So for those of you wondering if I game much, Stu is my studio computer and I back up Stu about every day. That way any changes I make to it automatically are backed up. Unfortunately, the Linux backup on this is not great. So I don't have any Linux systems in this list, but Stu is running Windows. So Stu does get backed up on here. I have an entire tutorial you'll find linked down below for diving deep into how active backup works and how the restore process works on it. Now let's talk about Synology Photos. It is a great application for those of you who are looking for a place to store it that's not the cloud that, well, maybe you don't have full control over and maybe those photos are personal and private to you and you don't think some cloud company should hold on to them. Synology Photos I reviewed probably 2021 is when I switched to it and I loaded up about 80,000 of my photos that I've had throughout, well, quite a bit of time, all into Synology Photos. It's done a great job, especially with the phone app. So as I travel somewhere, I take some photos, those photos get synced right up when I bring my system here, or I can do it over a VPN. So when my phone is here, it automatically syncs to my Synology via the photo app. And I'm going to say it works really well. This is a recent trip I took to Illinois to visit a client called Viking Chemical. And uh, yes, this is a video that I will be making, or maybe by the time you're watching this, have made and published on my channel. The nice thing is it has not just information in terms of the photo metadata, it even does have the geolocation and a lot of the other features similar to something like Google Photos. It does have object recognition. So since I did my video in 2021, all the way here till 2024, they've added a ton of great features, which does include some of the object recognition, but it isn't quite as good as Google yet. But the nice thing is my photos are all private as they keep adding features. It keeps getting better without me worrying about my data being, well, in some third-party place. So big thumbs up for Synology Photos. Their searching and tagging features work really well. So I think it's a good way to index and organize. I know there's some other third-party apps people might like, but back to the Docker 
containers that I mentioned. There's other ways you can load them on here. Now, Cloud Sync is really neat. I don't use it, but I set it up just to show because I have clients using it. I know several people really like it. If you want your Synology to have sync, not backup, sync with another third-party provider, such as Google Drive or many others, they've got Dropbox, C2 Object Storage, Azure Storage, etc. There's quite a few options in here that allow you to take and have a folder on your Synology synced with another external third-party service service, such as Dropbox. So if you wanted to use Box.com or Dropbox, or as I noted here, Google Drive, you can have this sync and it doesn't expose your Synology. You're not opening it up to the world. It's reaching out to that service. And if you have another person reaching out to that service or someone that you're sharing data with that is also using those services, this can be a good way to have the files editable on your Synology that will sync up to that cloud because it does two-way syncing, but you can be set to one way if there's a reason you want to do that. Uh, I do like this feature and I wanted to mention it because I know a lot of people may have a use case even though I don't use it. Now, this is much more business oriented, but active backup for Google Workspace and active backup for your Office 365 environment is a really solid use case for Synology. We even have clients who only have it a Synology just to back up their Office 365 environment at their office because you already have a copy in the cloud, but maybe you want a copy in the office because many people have moved to where they do not have servers in the office, but throwing a Synology in the office to have a backup of everything that is in your cloud environment because well, the email wars are kind of where they are and pretty much you're using either Office 365 in your business environments or you're using Google Workspace in your business environments. But the active backup for Google Workspace and active backup for 365 are both really good tools to back up the documents, your mail, your calendar, your contacts. Uh, they have a restore portal. I've got a whole review video I did on this. I think it's a great tool. And the fact that it doesn't have any licensing fees attached to it makes it a really intriguing option for businesses. If you have other Synologies on your local network, I think the central management system is actually a nice option. But I did say on your local network, I have found this to be very buggy when you use it across a VPN. If it gets disconnected, it seems to pause a long time. And please note, anyone setting this up, it will take a long time before it finalizes the connection. It tells you it's connecting and thinking for quite a while. And I don't really know why it does that because these are on the same local network. But once it does get in sync, it does allow you to update the DSM, view the storage, look at the services running, even update the packages on there. And you can say, oh, if there's an update, let's uh, update all the packages and hit yes. And now it's going to push all those updates to my other Synologies. I only have one other Synology, but I don't have to even log into it to be able to do that. I have a dedicated Synology for surveillance station. That's what it's running. And well, now it's actually updating it. So it'll be done in just a few moments and the central manager system will let me know. Now, an app I don't use as much, and this is mostly because I prefer to edit things locally whenever possible. I know, call me the old man that yells at cloud, but that's going to be Synology Drive. Synology Drive works fine for editing basic text documents or your spreadsheets. It's not going to be as full featured as the full blown office suites you're going to get from Google or Office 365, but it is a pretty good system, except for the mobile app. The mobile app experience to me is just really bad for editing documents. It's something that I think could really be improved, but I don't use it a lot. And the mobile app is part of that reason is it would be nice to have that. It does though have real time shared user editing of a document. So you can collaborate and that does work well. And because you can set up multiple user on Synology, I think that's a really good feature. So I'm kind of mixed on that particular one. Now, an application that I don't have mixed feelings on is definitely Synology Surveillance Station. This has been a really solid system I've used for years. We've deployed some pretty large setups for clients. The fact that it supports so many different cameras and of course now Synology having their own line of cameras that have been out for about a year or two makes this a really flexible system and with all the different options for object recognition, triggering, and even integrating this into things like Home Assistant where you can even go more in depth and build triggers off the Synology web hooks that are set up inside of it. This makes it a really compelling option. Now, the last two things I want to mention is Tailscale, which is something I've talked a lot about on this channel. Tailscale makes it really easy to build a mesh VPN network. And of course, tying your Synology right to that really simple, just tie it to your Telnet. It's natively built in and it's supported on a lot of models. And finally, the file sharing service. So if you want to share a file on your Synology NAS with someone else, share a folder, set permissions, set an expiration time for that. This is something natively built in and really adds to the functionality of your Synology NAS. Now, this is not an exhaustive list of every Synology app. These are just the ones I think are the most useful. Leave your thoughts and comments down below about which apps you like, which ones are the choices that make Synology the right 
right thing for you? Or which ones do you have questions about that maybe I can answer? I do spend a lot of time replying to people in the comments. Also, if you want to have a more in-depth discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com and we can have a more in-depth discussion on this and other topics. Worth noting, there's also a playlist right at the top link, which is all of my Synology tutorials that I have now and many more that I'm creating. So even after this video, that's always where you'll find them is at lawrence.video slash Synology. Like and subscribe to see more content on the channel and I'll see y'all later or engage with you on the comments and my forums or down below. Thanks.